everyone and welcome for the fourth day of 30 days of CNCF project. And today we are going to talk about Kubevert, the project that allows you to run virtual machines on your Kubernetes clusters. So in this video, we are going to talk about what is Kubevert, how does it work, demo Kubevert, and also answer the question, why running virtual machines on your Kubernetes clusters? Let's go. What is Kubevert? So Kubevert is a technology that allows us to run virtual machines on our Kubernetes clusters. Kubernetes initially was built to run only containers and containers are expecting to have some sort of infrastructure ready for them when they are starting to run. So for example, containers are sharing the kernel and they expected the kernel file system to be available for them. On the other side, when you are talking about VM, VMs got a different requirement from the infrastructure. For example, they are looking for devices, maybe emulated devices like networking, storage block devices as disk. They need access to the CPU. And all of that are the things that are really differentiated between containers and virtual machines. And in order to run virtual machines on our Kubernetes cluster, we need to do a lot of magic. So they would not run if we will just start a virtual machine in our container. Actually, even the images that built for container and virtual machines are completely different. So Kubert is actually the technology that enable us to run both of them on the same Kubernetes cluster. Why even run virtual machines on our Kubernetes cluster? It doesn't make sense. So if you're a small startup, started one maybe three years ago, everything is on Kubernetes, you are in the cloud, and that's perfectly fine. But larger companies, while they are in the market for a few years, they usually have a mixed workload. Some of it runs on Kubernetes and containerized, and some of it on virtual machines. It can be that even the most valuable and the most money-making services in the company are still in the virtual machines. And what we want is to create a single platform in an organization that will run both of them. Because if you need to manage both Kubernetes infrastructure to run container orchestration tool, and at the same time to run a virtual machines infrastructure that support the virtual machines that you got in the organization, you basically run the same platform twice. Because it's not only the container orchestration or the virtual machine virtualization tool that you have in place. There are full stacks for all of those. It can be a different observability tool, different monitoring tools, different logging tools. Everything can be different when you have this dual stack. And some organization want to converge those two platforms into a single platform and run everything on Kubernetes and manage everything in Kubernetes. So that's the main motivation. And it becomes really, really critical when we are talking about edge use cases. When you have really small hardware that you need to run at the edge and you are, cannot allow to yourself basically to run both of the virtualization, you need to understand that in some cases you need to decide what do you want to run. So some companies choose to run both virtual machines and Kubernetes clusters. So what they do is that, for example, if they have free servers at the edge, they run virtualization layer, and on top of it, they run Kubernetes cluster mixed with uh, the virtual machines. But some companies prefer to create one layer of abstraction that would be Kubernetes as a, an abstraction layer in container orchestration and run the virtual machines on top of that. So it can be edge cases, it can be also hospitals, government, and some high security profiles application requires to run on specific conditions and you want to be low on the hardware that you ship to your customers. How Kubert works? Kubert will rely on KVM virtualization capabilities in order to run virtual machines in our cluster. So for that, we need some prerequisites from our nodes and from our hardware. From the hardware level, we need the CPU to be able to run virtualization. Most of the hardware and the CPUs available allow us to do that. In the node itself, we need to have virtualization capabilities. 
So Kubernetes rely on KVM virtualization, but we need to deploy, make sure that it's installed and deploy the Kubernetes libd, QEMO, all of that stuff to be available on the node. Some of the node operating system images does not come with those capabilities and we need to add them later or to use the image that we want to. When we want to create a virtual machine, we will create a custom resource in Kubernetes called virtual machine. The Kubert operator will understand that it needs to create a virtual machine. It will spin up a pod and will create the virtual machine inside a pod. Kubert will take care for all of the hardware and the thing required for it to run. And in the eye level, this is how Kubert works. Now we are going to go one step deeper of how the full architecture of Kubert looks like. Now I will want us to take a look on the architecture draw of Kubert, and I want to explain you each part of it. So what we got on the left side is our user creating CRs and asking for virtual machines to be created, the kubectl on the top and the Kubernetes API server at the bottom. We also got the virt control and the virt API allow us to manage the virtual machine within our clusters. On the right side, we got an node in Kubert looks like. So something that is a little bit different is that we have a daemon set called the virt handler and that does all the magic regarding in the node for the virtual machines creation and lifecycle management. On the right side, we can see the pod container and exactly how pod and containers look like when they are normal containers and normal pods without any virtual machines. But in the middle, we can see a pod that run a virtual machines. And this pod is a little bit different. Why? Because it runs a virtualization components that allow us to spin up the virtual machines. And basically what would happen is that Kubernetes will spin up a pod with virtual machines capabilities and this pod will run the VM on the node that it run on. So the virtual machine we are going to run is going to be run basically inside the pod, but on the node. So it's kind of confusing, but it really makes sense because in the container, we don't have virtualization capabilities, but on the node we have, and Kubernetes knows how to work only with pods. So there is a transition in here from creating a pod which got virtualization capabilities to how do we spin up the virtual machines with the requirements it got from the node. And this is how Kubert works. It's really, really amazing to see how all of this glue and virtual machines capability can be embedded into Kubernetes to create something that is valuable uh, for organization and teams that needs to run virtual machines within Kubernetes. For today, and today, we are going to use a tool called Kirakuda. And what it allows us to do is basically create a virtual ephemeral environment in the cloud and use Kubernetes cluster that does not run on our machine. So we don't need to take care of all the things required in order to run Kubert. So if we are going into the Kubert website, we have a few options in here to run it on Minikube, run on Kind, and run on Killer Cuda. We are going to go with Killer Cuda and give it a try. In here, what we have are two options, how we can use that for introduction and experiment with CDI. We are going to use the introduction, which is what we are going to do today. Killer Cuda would actually create a K3S cluster for us and give us the instruction on the left side on what we need to do. So here, the main of the screen, we can see my Ubuntu. Uh, I can run kubectl get pods and see that we don't have any pods on the default namespace. And basically we have instructions in here what we need to do. We can click on the instructions and Killer Coda will actually execute them. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create the Kubert operator. What it will do is that it will create the Kubert namespace. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Uh, create a Kubert uh, namespace, create the custom resource definition of the Kubert operator and everything uh, required for Kubert to run. If we're going to use kubectl get crds, we are going to see that only one CRD was added of Kubert. And what we are going to do today is that we are going to run the following command to deploy the Kubert operator. 
Oh, sorry. We're going to uh, use the CR and that will make the operator to create a deployment. So if we are going to do kubectl gets pods minux covert, what we are going to see is that two operator were spin up. And in a few seconds, what we are going to see is that um, it's going to spin a virtual environment for us. So we are going to use that. We are going to change the kubevert to use also emulation. And at the same time, we are going to uh, install vertctl, which is a command line uh, to actually communicate with the KVM virtual interface. So we're going to install that, schmod it, and at the same time, we should see maybe the kubevert um, resources spinning up. So we can see, first of all, that we have the kubevert API spinning up and starting to run. And what happened is that it will create the controller, the handler, everything required uh, for Kubri to operate. At the same time, we can check our CRDs. And that, what we will see is that a lot of CRDs were added to the system. For example, virtual machine instances, uh, virtual machines, migration, snapshots, virtual machines pool. We have a lot of CRDs that were added that will allow us to operate our virtual machines uh, using kubevert. Okay, so let's check if kubevert, yeah, kubevert now is up and running. Um, we can check uh, the kubevert by getting that and we can see it's deployed successfully. And now we can run our uh, virtual machine. So I'm going to deploy that. And at the same time, I want you to take a look on this URL and see how the CRD looks like. So in here, let me zoom in a little bit. What we can see is that it's going to deploy a virtual machine called test VM. Uh, this is the size of the VM, the disk required for it, the interfaces, network interfaces, networks. And we see that it looks like a CR, but not a Kubernetes deployment one for containers, it's really hardware oriented because it's a virtual machine. So now going back into our virtual machines, we can use kubectl get VMs to see if our VM is starting. Uh, I guess it will take it a little while to, a while to start. Um, okay, now we need to start a VM using the vertctl start VM. I don't know why we need to do that, but I guess that in production system, it should um, start automatically and we don't need to run a command anytime we start. Maybe it's something about the definition or the default for that. And now we can see that our VM is up and running. Um, it's also ready. It means that we got indication for that. And when we are go going to use vertctl console test VM, we are going to be connected into the virtual machines run within our Kubernetes cluster. So before we are doing that, I want to get all the daemon sets. And if you remember in the architecture that we saw previously, uh, the virt handler was a daemon set that was deployed in each one of the nodes and it took care for everything regarding the virtual machines uh, lifecycle, the creation of them on each one of the node. In this example, we got, it's only one node cluster, and this is why we see the daemon set with only one uh, deployment running. So the last thing we are going to do is that we are going to use vertctl. Test VM, okay. We're going to use go cubs go. Oh, sorry, it's a serious cluster. So I'm going to use the Cirrus and the Go comes Go. And now we are in the virtual machine inside our Kubernetes cluster. And that's really amazing that using that, we were able to create virtual machines in our Kubernetes cluster. Uh, that's it for the demo today. If you want to explore more, you can go to Killer Code and try some of the uh, instruction they have, it can be on kubevert or any other else. 
Uh, and if you want to run it on your local machine, I do not recommend to use Mac for that, but if you have a Linux machine, that can work perfectly. And we almost forgot the last thing for today is to put in the new sticker for the first day. Oh. There you go. Thank you very much for watching. See you tomorrow.